love. Your dream vacation to Turkey starts from Rs. 79,999 only with GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Hello and welcome to Kalata Plus. In this video rep episode, we are going to be talking about Sudha Kongara Sarfira. The film is a solid remake of a solid film and it has its own flavor both in terms of moments and in terms of performances. Sudha Kongara's biggest strength as a director may be her ability to lock onto the wavelength of an actor. By the time Surya Reporter came out, Surya had long established himself as a good actor, especially under filmmakers with a unique sensibility. Like NGK for instance, the film may not have come together but Surya was fantastically intense. But in Surarai Potre, in his national award winning portrayal of a small man with big dreams of building a low cost airline, Surya tapped into zones we'd never seen him in. It's the same with Akshay Kumar in the Hindi remake, Sarfira. His character is named Veer and he has rarely seemed so vulnerable on screen. We may have to go back to something, all the way back to something like Vakht a race against time to see Akshay's spirit so repeatedly bruised and beaten. At one point, when Veer's dreams are dashed yet again, the camera moves in close, Veer is weeping and the salt and pepper beard makes the man look even more defeated, as though even age is not on his side. Then in a flash, Veer sees the man responsible for his plight, that is Parish Rawal standing in for the class's system and his sadness turns into anger. The instant change of emotion is powerful. This is a committed charismatic performance. It's not that Akshay Kumar has not given worthwhile performances earlier, but of late his apparent tendency to rush through multiple films that have apparently been put together hastily has reduced him to an actor who'd rather let his screen presence, his stardom, do the acting. But in Sarfira, we see the Akshay we last saw in probably Atrangi Ray as a character who has to rise above a deeply messy situation. Instant tendency for those of us who have seen Sora Reporter may be to compare the two leading men, but it helps that Sudha and her co-writer Shalini Usha Devi do not deliver an exact remake. Take the superb, psychologically inward-looking scene where Surya hesitated to ask his wife for money. You could see him struggle to bring out the words which seem stuck in his throat. The same moment plays out very differently, more casually in Sarfira. What earlier looked like a scene constructed specifically around this single moment now comes across more organically like it is yet another walk and talk conversation between Veer and his wife Rani played by Radhika Madan. These changes are the reason we get a different tonality of performance instead of an actor merely mimicking what an earlier actor did. We see Sudha's facility with actors with Seema Biswas who is brilliant as Veer's mother even in a few scenes and Radhika Madan too. Radhika takes what could have been a one note feisty character and makes Rani a caring companion. It's all in the writing of course but the actors ring out every last drop of emotion from every page. As for the non-character writing, that is the story and the flow of events, Sarfira is very much like its predecessor. This film starts on a high, literally in the skies, and the heavy-duty drama slowly gets grounded as Rani and Veer meet and discuss their respective business ideas. It's lovely when the hero of a film has a solid ambition. It's lovelier when the heroine has an ambition too. She wants to run a bakery. The loveliest touch is when they make a pact, this is her suggestion, that their earnings go into a common pool. It's not his income, it's not her income, it is their income. I don't think I've ever seen household financial decisions being depicted on screen ever this way. Less so when the couple is yet to get married. It's like a desi version of a prenuptial agreement. But at other places, the writing shows signs of turbulence. Take the stretch where Veer's father is dying and he finds at the ticket counter in the airport that he does not have enough money. He approaches other passengers in the airport, all of whom refuse to help and he is soon reduced to a sobbing mess. But the relationship between Veer and his father hasn't been as well etched as the one between Veer and Rani. So the breakdown comes across like a standalone scene, like something from an acting audition. Again, Akshay gives it his all, he's terrific, but we are responding to an actor's efforts, not a character's plight. We've been airdropped into this situation, into this moment. We've not arrived at it organically. The attempt, of course, is to make a crowd-pleasing mainstream movie from the story of Air Deccan founder G.R. Gopinath, Captain Gopinath, who recorded his tale in a book titled Simply Fly. In some places, it's the screenplay that seems simply flied. 
All biopics, even fictionalized ones, have the same arc, failure, 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 success. You have to do something to vitalize this failure, 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 success and that Sudha certainly does. Like Niket Bomiredi's floating camera, in the scenes with Veer, Sudha wants her film to stay airborne at all times. So the film at times seems to be a series of event after breathless event and in these stretches I long for a breather, I long for a shot as basic as say Veer running his hands over the surface of one of the planes he has fought so hard to get. It can't all be noble-minded social service, right? That is, it can't all be, I need to make flying cheaper for the masses. Some of it has to be personal too, as this, damn, I did it. The scenes that do breathe, therefore, stand out. When Veer's father dies and he confronts his mother, there is blessedly no background score. We are driven by the power of the words, by the dialogues, by the power of the emotional situation, by the power of the performances. And when the score slowly begins to ripple in through piano notes, the emotional high becomes higher without the sense of us being emotionally mangled and manipulated. Like Sura Reporter, Sarfira is a solid movie that just stops short of becoming something special. The emotional portion work very well, the event portions less so, but this is also no lazy remake. They have looked carefully at the original, identified things that could be bettered or simply changed and pesky critics be damned, they have retained the big flavorful massy moments that are calculated to bring a lump in the throat. I am talking about the scene at the post office with all the villagers backing Veer when he is at his lowest. I am talking about Rani telling Veer that self-pity is not an attractive quality. Looking back, the biggest achievement of both these films may not be in showing a man achieving his dream but in showing how a woman is such an integral part of this dream both financially and emotionally. This is not a flavor you usually find in our films and this is the smooth runway on which Sarfira takes off and lands. And that's it about Sarfira. If you like this video review do subscribe to Galata Plus and see you soon at the movies. Hola! Your dream vacation to Turkey starts from Rs 79,999 only with GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand.